five minutes with Eric. So I don't know if you just saw my one minute, but here's what I'm going to talk about. The American rule. And the American rule is about getting attorney's fees. And now let's think about this. Let's say someone screws you out of $20,000, right? It's a deal gone wrong and you, they're bad and you're good. And they took $20,000 and you come to a lawyer and obviously you're, you're upset, right? $20,000 is a lot of money. I don't care who you are. And so you go to the lawyer and the lawyer says, well, you know, we can send him a demand letter. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't. And you ask, well, what if we sue him? And if the lawyer is, has experience and is honest, they're going to tell you to not sue someone over $20,000. Now there, there's variations on this. And a lot of times people will have their, their ego and their pride and they'll say, no, it's the principle. I have to do it. But let's just be clear. The average litigation is taking at least a year and probably more like two or three years. Uh, and it all depends on if the other side is going to fight back, right? If they're fighting back and they're throwing money at their attorney and then their attorney is playing all the games in the book. Because remember, litigation is a sport, right? And some people are good at the sport and some people are better at the sport and some people know the rules and some people know the, 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 the rules behind the rules. And, you know, the old saying is don't hate the player, hate the game. So a guy comes to me let's just pretend the guy is getting sued for $20,000. He comes to me. I can say to him with confidence, Hey man, you want me to stall this for a year or two? And I can do that on a five to $10,000 retainer. And I can just play all the dirty tricks right within the, within the, the, the rules right there. I'm not like breaking any rules. Um, but dragging something out as long as possible is not that hard to do. And a halfway decent lawyer knows how to do it. So again, you, the, the guy comes to me, he's been screwed out of $20,000 and he wants to know whether he can sue the guy. And I say, well, listen, our minimum retainer is 5,000, sometimes it's 7,500, sometimes it's $10,000. And he's like, well, I mean, gosh, I can't spend $10,000 to chase after 20. Well, which is actually kind of a good return on your investment, right? Where else are you gonna get, you spend 10 to get double? I mean, that, that, that's a pretty good return. But if I'm being truthful, we can spend $150,000 litigating a case if it's well litigated with depositions and hearings and motions practice and ultimately a trial. And so again, you're like, well, hold on a second. I can't spend $150,000 to chase after $20,000. And I completely agree with you, by the way. I'm right there with you. And I, a lot of times I'll tell people don't do it. But here's the wild card. Can I get my attorney's fees back? So yeah, maybe I'll spend $100,000 chasing after 20, but the bad guy's gonna have to pay me back. Okay. So the American rule says, no, you can't. The American rule says each party has to bear their own costs. So you can go out and hire the cheapest lawyer in town who went to the worst law school and barely passed the bar, or you can hire the fanciest lawyer in town who went to best law school with the best pedigree, right? And obviously the hourly rate for the best lawyer is gonna be a lot higher than the hourly rate for the brand new baby lawyer that just graduated from a bad law school. So the, the exceptions, and this is where we live in the law, the exceptions to the American rule are one and two. Number one, is there a signed contract with a prevailing party attorney's fee clause? Now, if the guy comes to me and he goes, I got screwed out of $20,000, I'll always say, hey, did you have a contract? And he'll go, half the time he says, no, I didn't. I thought I could trust him. Or yeah, we had something go back and forth, but we never ended up signing it. And I always think to myself, I'm like, why did you give someone $20,000 without a signed agreement? And it's like, maybe you'll learn your lesson and this will never happen to you again which is why I really don't like working with young people because they don't know all the mistakes they're gonna make. And I like working with older people who've already made those mistakes and they know, hey, let me spend $1,500 on getting a good contract in place before I pay this guy $20,000. Anyways, I don't have a time machine. I can't go back in time and change the past. So if he says yes, I'm like, please send it to me. And I'm just praying. I'm like, okay, he sent me the contract. It's signed by the bad guy. And there's an attorney's fee clause. I'm like, all right, let's go, giddy up. Because now I'm not demanding 20,000, I'm demanding 20,000 plus my fees and my fees are gonna go up. So when the other guy gets it, he gets my demand letter or he gets my lawsuit, he's gonna go talk to a lawyer and the lawyer's gonna say, listen, you're on the hook for the attorney's fees if we lose, right? Now, by the way, it's a double-edged sword. If he wins and we lose, like maybe, maybe the facts aren't exactly the way it was described to me. The old saying is there's three sides to every story. All right, so if there's no contract, you know, I'm like, oh, there's no contract. The second exception to the American rule is if there's a statute that provides a private cause of action and al allows an attorney's fee award. So in Florida, we have a couple. We have the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act, uh, also commonly known as FDUPTA. We have the Florida Civil Theft Statute. 
So the point of the matter is the lawyer is going to be like, well, listen, we don't have a contract, but let's see if we can find a statute. And if you can, again, it's a double-edged sword. You lose, you can have the attorney's fees thrown in your face and you'll be paying the other guy's attorney's fees. So again, the $20,000 dilemma happens all the time. It happens too much for me to even think about. So please uh, if, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the American rule. And of course, if you have any questions, I'll contact you directly.